Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Sports Momentum Index monthly podcast series. I'm Shane Wynn with Allison Sports, joined by Jen Musel of Harris Pole Sports. How are you doing, Jen? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fantastic today. Yeah. And my partner in arms, Shane Arman, also of Allison Sports. Hey, man. Hey, how's it going? Uh, oh, I'll tell you how it's going. I've got Olympic fever. So... We are in the throes of the Paris Olympics, and uh, we're reaching fever pitch at this point in time. And in this month's edition of the Sports Momentum Index, we took a look into the Olympics. And Jen, I want to start with you because I'm interested in knowing what the demand is going to be this month in terms of content uh, uh, consumption from consumers that are interested in the Olympics. Yeah, uh, it's going to it's going to be huge, right, as you would probably expect um, in our data, we see more than three quarters of Americans say they're going to tune in to some sort of coverage, whether that's watching live on broadcast TV or engaging, um, you know, with the Olympics or the athletes via social outlets. So um, huge numbers. Um, and I think notably a lot of, you know, a lot of young um, Gen Z is planning to engage. So we actually see highest reported engagement among among Gen Z. So more than 80% of Gen Z said they're going to watch or engage with the Olympics in some way. So definitely, you're right, definitely hitting fever pitch um, and you know, something that's really, really widespread um, across everybody. That's awesome. Do we know what they want to watch? We do know what they want to watch. Uh, you know, we asked, we asked people what they're most excited to tune into, and it's a lot of the sports you would probably expect. Uh, gymnastics, uh, swimming, track and field, basketball all come out in the top five. We also see things like tennis, soccer, uh, beach volleyball, volleyball. Those sports are, are kind of in the top 10 as well. So, uh, but, but a range of sports, right? Um, we've got cohorts of people that are really excited about table tennis and rugby and, and things like that as well. So uh, a lot of the kind of marquee events, but the Olympics seem to be a time where people really engage in a lot of those emerging kind of sports that we talk about a lot on this podcast. Yeah, we definitely do. And and to that point, there's several sports that are really first time sports at the Olympics. Are we seeing any traction around those? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So we've got a couple of sports, as you guys probably know. So breaking is brand new this year. Um, this is getting most traction among Gen Z and, and millennials. We have you know, nearly 40% of, of those two age groups saying that they're interested in kind of tuning in and, and checking it out. So breaking wow. definitely um, strong traction, but really similar traction for the other, you know, kind of newer sports. So skateboarding, surfing, um, sport climbing, all in their second Olympics. Um, and again, we're seeing, again, right about that 40% of those Gen Z millennials who are really interested in, in checking, checking those sports out. So, you know, those emerging kind of growing sports that we've been talking about last month, um, we're really seeing that momentum carry through into the, into the Olympics as well. Armin, I wish we could send you to Tahiti to cover uh, surfing yeah. for us. Oh, I know, I know. My, uh, my ticket got lost in the mail there, but a couple observations from me too. I think that on the breaking <clears throat> side of things, I mean, I, I've seen it, you know, there was just a segment on the Today Show, I think yesterday about breaking. We helped one of our clients actually align themselves with um, one of the one of the original founders of breaking. And so we got, we've gotten kind of an inside look at, at, at how that's come to life and they're having some success from a media standpoint um, on that sport. But one of the other observations that I made was with this data, if you look at some of the splits, but even between men and women, the, the sports that they follow are so different. And that's what I think is the beauty of the Olympics, right? Like there are so many different opportunities to really target and hone in on who you're trying to reach. And so I was, I thought it was interesting to see how different men and women um, think about, you know, the different sports that they're planning to follow and engage with during the Olympics. What's uh, give us some examples of, of where we're seeing um, that that distinction between men and women? Yeah, you know, men, so men, men, a lot of the traditional sports, so you know, the basketball, soccer, um, but they also have like track and field and boxing and weightlifting yeah. in there, um, wrestling, shooting, right? And then for women, we're seeing gymnastics really lead the way. Um, swimming is, of course, up there, diving, equestrian, trampoline. So like very different worlds there um, and, and not really a lot of crossover. You, you would think that some of the more mainstream sports would have more crossover, but we just didn't yeah. really see that, right, Jen? Yeah, there's definitely a dichotomy. You get a few kind of like, you know, engaging in both, but they definitely have different preferences, uh, which is, to your point, for a brand, a really great opportunity to find your very specific target and sort of talk to them in a in a, in a a space that's very personally relevant to them. 
Well, I can't wait to see these opening ceremonies roll down the Seine. I think people are, are in for a real treat. This is going to be a very unique uh, Olympic experience. And uh, uh, that's some pretty interesting data that we, uh, that we captured. I want to turn to the monthly sports momentum index uh, for a few minutes and, and really talk about two things um, that I saw that are notable this, this month. One is on an emerging sport, uh, the Snow League. So this is Sean White. Um, I actually had the privilege of watching him announce it live on stage awesome. that the Snow League was forming uh, a few weeks ago in Cannes at the uh, Cannes Lions Festival, specifically at Stagwell Sport Beach. That was kind of awesome. And uh, he went on a media tear uh, after that. And then I want to talk a little bit about some really interesting data we're seeing around Major League Baseball, which is a very established sport. But let's, let's start with, uh, with Snow League, Jen. What are we seeing? Yeah, this is a, a really exciting league to talk about. Um, as you know, as as you all both know, brand new leagues have a lot of work to do in establishing awareness and you know, right? Like getting people engaged with the effort. And you know, when you think about something like the NBA, they've got nearly universal awareness, right? In the '90s, you know, high '80s percent of Americans are aware of these leagues, so pretty much everybody's aware of those. Um, so it's really exciting when we see something like Snow League. We fielded this research right after, you know, a week or two after it was announced, and that media tour had, you know, kind of been in full force. And it, you know, it doesn't have awareness of the the NBA or you know the big leagues, but it's got like you know, almost half as much as they do. And, wow. you know, a lot of that awareness is new, right? It's people who have kind of just heard the name or slightly familiar. Um, so it can mean a few different things, but they've done a really, really great job of getting the word out about Snow League and building a lot of excitement um, among among Americans behind it. I know we look at, uh, in the Sports Movement Index, we look at the sort of the personal relevance, the, yeah. the cultural uh, relevance, and then engagement you know, where, where, where in that framework were we seeing traction on Snow League? Yeah, great question. You know, the, the kind of really interesting thing about Snow League is because it, they don't have merch yet, or, or if they do, you know, it's not widespread in, in stores yet. Right. Um, so a lot of those traditional ways that people kind of show their support for sports are still being developed. So really where we're seeing traction for Snow League is among that, that personal relevance. These are sports people are really excited about. They, you know, personally kind of identify with them, particularly some of the younger segments with, you know, snowboarding and, and things like that. Um, and there's a, a hunger for it. There's an excitement to talk about these sports on socials. There's an excitement to learn more. There's an excitement to like be able to tune in and watch it and so that sort of anticipation and personal relevance is really driving um the momentum that we're seeing behind snow league right now yeah that's great i think you know even just like paging through some of the media coverage i mean i think you you can see the passion that sean white has behind this initiative a lot of the coverage was super positive i mean you know definitely reimagining you know, sort of the trajectory and all the fragmented pieces of what winter sports typically are. We always think yeah. of the Olympics for, for snow sports, but now, you know, he, he's really trying to make this a little bit bigger and bring together the best of the best in, in the sport. And it sounds like they're off to a really good start. Yeah, I think yeah. hearing the way he positioned it on stage at, at Stagwell Sport Beach, um, it can mean nothing but good things for yeah. professional so snowboarders. Um, I think everything, everyone is pretty excited about it, but it's great to hear that the fans yeah. are also acknowledging it and, and getting excited about it. So, all right, let's, let's turn to a traditional one for a second. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time looking at emerging sports here, a lot of time uh, focusing on women's sports. MLB is about as established as you get, yeah. but there's some interesting things going on this month, Armin. Yeah, there's there's been a lot going on over the last couple of months. And I mean, just to even take a broader look at it, I mean, Major League Baseball's undergone undergone some of the most significant changes structurally to the game on the field that you see. Shorter games, um, just just a more engaged audience. That's showing up in the turnstiles. There's more people attending games and watching games than ever before. And MLB this year is doubling down. I mean, we see it with some of the clients we're working with activating against MLB. But you look at the mid-June time frame, you had the Rickwood game, which was a first of its kind game that happened in Alabama to honor the Negro Leagues. You had the MLB announcing that the Negro League stats um, would be folded into the official records of Major League Baseball. SBJ was named League of the Year. I mean, I could go on and on here, but MLB is clearly hitting a chord and doing doing the right things to re-engage an audience that was typically thought of as maybe a little bit older and a little bit boring. Um, so it's, it's it's been fascinating to see. 
You take personal offense to that, don't you, Shane? I could see that in the way you reacted. I don't, I don't consider myself old yet, but certainly older. <laughs> so, older than me. I still, I still show up in the data. So, yeah. <laughs> and great. we are, you know, we are really seeing that in the data, right? We see, you know, significant changes in their momentum from earlier this year. So, I think, I think all of those things uh, are really playing out very clearly in the data too, right? So that's. That was exciting. Well, the the one thing that, I mean, I'm sure MLB and Rob Manfred would be super happy about, we have a cool factor. We, we can measure cool yeah. factor. And the MLB is up in that category, it which is. I think is, okay. is probably the most telling stat out of them all. And I, the, the least expected that I would have seen yeah. from MLB over the course of the, the index, you know, the three different waves of data that we have to show for. So it'll be interesting to see if they can keep it up. I mean, that's been the, that's been the, the external strategy, right? Like they've been talking about this now for three or four years that they realize they've got to do stuff like this and to see the needle starting to move, I think is probably very encouraging for them. Thanks for joining me again this month. Some pretty interesting stuff. Super excited again about the Olympics. Uh, you know, we're again, fever pitch right now, and, uh, we'll be back next month, uh, with some more data for y'all. Thanks for joining us.